This distribution weighing in at only 11 megs is probably the smallest Linux distribution I have ever seen. This is Tiny Core OS right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Alright folks, welcome to Tiny Core. Alright, first we're going to look at two of their images. We're going to look at their 11 meg disk image and then we're going to look at their uh, other image that they have which is the plus. Alright, first in the 11 meg Tiny Core image, let me start the live CD version and you will see here that when you go ahead and boot this thing this is going to load up fairly quick. Now, um, this booted in under five seconds when I wasn't running my screencaster. And uh, there it is. All right. Now, Tiny Core really does not have a whole lot. Basically, it is just the core kernel and then a few, few packages on top to give it a graphic user interface. You have a power button here. You have access to a terminal. Uh, a simple text editor, a control panel here which gives you some options. You can back up and restore your system, you can control your date and time network, you can even uh, adjust the uh, TCW bar, which is this little bar down here on the bottom. You can change its uh, appearance a little bit, you can adjust its icons, you can change the icon size, the amount of zoom and that sort of thing, that is all here. You also have mounting tools, mouse tools, your system statistics and wallpaper can be adjusted here. And then of course you have services, you can set up a swap file for this if you need an extra swap for it, a terminal server. And then XBISA here will allow you to choose a screen resolution for this, very nice indeed. Now, and, and like I said for uh, an 11 meg uh, distribution, what do you expect to get with this? You're not going to get a whole lot, folks. Okay, in apps here, this is your tool for downloading applications, and we're going to play with this later on when I look at the larger 64 meg core image. Uh, I wasn't really able to do much with this before. Okay, then you have SCM apps or self-contained applications that you can download and run in this as well. We'll play with that later, if necessary. Okay, and my mouse is acting funny here. There we go. We can tell it to run a specific program. I wonder if there are programs already in the drop-down. No, there are not. Okay, but that's because we haven't installed any. And then, of course, right here, maybe I need to put a new battery in my mouse here. Then we have a mounting tool. All right, let me go ahead and I'm going to fire this one off, and then we're going to load in the other disk image. All right, we looked at Tiny Core. Now we're going to look at Core Plus. This one weighs in at 65 megs, most likely because this has Wi Fi drivers and that sort of thing. Let's go ahead and start this. And when the bootloader screen comes up here, I'm going to select to boot this. Tiny Core plus installation extension because I actually want to install this in my virtual machine. Okay, and of course it's going to take a moment to uh, load up. And let me put this in a mode that will be easier for you guys to view on the screen here. And as you can see, the operating system is completely loaded and ready to go. All right, wonderful. Okay, now I'm just going to do a quick little right click here. And under applications, we're going to select TC install. Okay. I want to select whole disk on this, and then we're going to select SDA for the core. Make sure that you have bootloader checked. EXT4 is what we want. Um, I'm not going to add any of these options, but you can add these options if you want to. It gives you a whole list of the options that you need. 
Okay, and then here is where you will add a few things to um, to uh, get more out of this operating system. For instance, um, obviously you may want a GUI desktop, otherwise you may just want to have a text-based interface. Now I'm using this in the virtual machine and the Tiny Core already provided a support layer for um, Ethernet networking. So if you have a cable that you plug into the computer, it's already set up that way. But if you want wireless or you need a Windows driver, the NDIS wrapper, that is here and then wireless firmware. I am not going to install any of these. You also have a remaster tool and a non-US keyboard layout support if you need to install those. I'm going to skip those because I don't really need them. Okay, and then all we have to do is select proceed and it will go through the process of installing this operating system. Okay, now with the installation completed, all we need to do now is we need to just exit the system. We will reboot and make sure that the live medium is removed from our virtual disk drive and then we can start playing around with this just a little bit here. So I'm going to select to reboot. All right. That rebooted really, really fast. Um, you know, this loads faster than my art setup. Wow. Okay, so now we have a nice core system that we can build on top of. Now, something to keep in mind. Let's say you want to install Abbey Word. In my initial test before filming, I tried to install Abbey Word, and it was taking a really long time. But remember, it's going to download not only Abbey Word, but all of its dependencies, such as cups and all that other stuff. I really don't want to dedicate all that time into it. But um, let's first have a look at SCM apps. These are self-contained applications that you can get. And uh, so let's go ahead and select cloud, the cloud remote, and then browse. Okay, and as you can see, there are a number of applications here that are self-contained that we can download and we can play with. Um, hmm, let's see if there's something um, nice and small that we could uh, toy around with. Why don't we uh, try uh, the Midori web browser? Okay, Midori is a light web browser, blah, 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 blah. It's 31 megs. Wow, much bigger than that 11, huh? So let's go ahead and um, select to install and press go. Now we have a terminal that's going to load up here. And if you want to see what's going on here, they've got these cool little buttons here which will change the size of the window. I'll just click this one here. And now we'll fill the length of the screen and we'll give this some time to download all to download this package. Hmm. Is it me or do they have their connection throttle? This download's taking a little while. It already downloaded uh, GTK2, which is a self-contained file, and now it's downloading Midori. It looks like it has five or six minutes left of this, and hopefully it's not going to download much more. Okay, the installation completed and the window just automatically closed. So now let's see if... Ah, look what it did. It put a link to it right here on our panel. So let's try it out and see if it works. Hey, hey, hey. All right. So now we have a nice lightweight web browser. It comes with DuckDuckGo as the default. And <clears throat> let's uh, go ahead and pull up a website. All right, very nice indeed. I'm very pleased with uh, what this does. And uh, so that was just installing a self-contained file. And basically all it did was just download a dependency package and then the file itself. Very nice indeed. Okay, well, why don't we take a, cl a quick look at applications here. I'm going to close this down now. And these are just regular applications that you can install rather than having self-contained files. And under Apps, we go into Cloud, Remote, and then Browse. And let's see if we can find a calculator or something tiny. Ah, here it is, calculator. All right. And we'll select 
the, you can either select on boot, on demand, download only, download and load. Why don't we download it and load it? Okay, that took a little while and it downloaded a lot of dependencies, but now we actually have the calculator installed for doing all of our little calculations and that sort of thing. All in all, I'm liking what I see here. If you want to have a nice, lightweight Linux distribution that you can build on top of, Tiny Core may be the answer you're looking for. Um, would I recommend this for older hardware? Absolutely. Why not give it a try? It is using kernel 3, though, which I think has outmoded some older hardware. But at the 11 meg or 65 uh, meg file size for download, you could make a bootable USB and or a, a bootable CD and try this out. Plus, you know, re-recordable discs are dirt cheap and that sort of thing. So um, it would be well, it would be well worth your time. There's some good documentation on the website for Tiny Core. I will have a link in the show notes. It has a link to the instructions for installing this, as I did in the demonstration here, and. It also has links to the wiki. Uh, I found this was fairly easy and straightforward to use. Uh, there wasn't anything overly too difficult about it. I hope you all found this information to be useful. Mm -hmm.